morning everybody happy Monday just dropped my daughter off at school it's the might not get any better today it's like the best thing ever we got that little 10 minutes in the morning that we have together we get to joke around and have fun talk about her day at school coming up it's the highlight of my day dropping uh, Maya off at kindergarten. She's always so excited to get to school. It'll be fun to watch as the years go by uh, if she continues to be as excited as she is now when I drop her off at school. Let's hope so. So I watched, um, I guess you would call it like a Netflix special. It was one part documentary, one part, um, there was like a storyline that was happening behind it with uh, characters that were playing out what was um, being talked about in these interviews, and it's extremely disturbing and very shocking. And I'm glad uh, that I watched it because it opened my eyes to, I think, what a lot of people are experiencing and troubled by. And we see it time and time and time again in, in our timelines and things that people are saying and we hear people saying, you know, um, people just aren't the same anymore. People are so hurtful. People are so opinionated. Um, you know, we can't believe that uh, people that, you know, are friends of ours. I mean, we, we, we consider them to either be, you know, Facebook friends and we watch them, you know, through our phones and we generally like them and, you know, approve of their behavior. Uh, at least I hope so. Otherwise, why, why would we be friends with them? Or we know them and we have an actual relationship with them and, and we're Facebook friends as well as real, real friends. And I think we've seen, particularly since, uh, I mean, I, I, I really feel like it was, you know, uh, when COVID started, just how many people that were friends were at each other's throats. I mean, I've seen... You know, if I've seen one, I've seen a hundred people talk about, uh, good morning, Chris. Uh, good morning, Nate. What's going on? And I've seen these people uh, post clearly on here. Like, I don't care if you're family. I don't care if we've known each other for 20 years. Um, if you have this opinion or you support this person, uh, you must be an idiot. Uh, and I'm deleting you. And we're taking actual people that we know we can speak to their character we're familiar with their their values and we've chosen them as a friend and then through interaction on our phone because of social media we write these people off and then the people we don't write off I've seen and I've been as guilty as anybody um, we try and force our opinions on other people on on Facebook and it's 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 extremely exhausting um, I found my sometimes um, during the day getting looped into a conversation or a debate about a particular issue, whether it be, I mean, let's face it, uh, the virus and, 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 and the response both nationally and, and locally to that um, with lockdowns and, and how it's affect, affected businesses, that was a very polarizing conversation. Uh, most people either felt strongly, uh, you know, that we should have more lockdowns and they were um, absolutely essential. Then there's a group of people that felt that the lockdowns were overreaching and you know violated our constitutional rights and felt very strongly about it. And then as the election started to get closer and closer, those debates would 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 escalate. It became more and more of a a topic of conversation, which is natural. And I saw people just just you know at each other's throats, literally, and it was extremely disturbing. So I watched this show called Social Dilemma. If you haven't seen it, you 100% should watch it. And the, here's the bottom line, is that in order for these social media platforms, at some point in their development, they had to figure out how they were gonna monetize it. Like, how are we gonna make money? So what they found was, is that they can sell our attention. So our, uh, us as people, our attention is worth money. Because then you can advertise there and you can influence people to do things if they're constantly on their phone or on Facebook. Um, it's a, it's a, a, a place where we can get someone's attention and we can feed them with information to get them to do something. So as these computers 
that literally run. I mean, you, when you watch the movie, they'll show you the uh, you know infrastructure that runs these social media platforms and it's massive warehouses. Like for those of you that know like ES3, that massive building up there. And you think about the size of that. And when I watch this movie, it looks like that type of facility filled with computers, which I mean, makes sense if you think about what's needed to run these social media platforms with 2 billion people that use them 24, excuse me, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And what this does is the computer constantly evaluates your interaction on social media. What do you like? What do you click the angry button? What do you love? Um, everything from the like button, which was invented, they talked about that, was all to increase engagement. And it was a way for them to track how you interact. Uh, from everything to the products that we consume. Um, and then this computer constantly uh, analyzes that and then is, is, is always throwing information to your timeline or your inbox or being tagged to keep your engagement constant if possible. They would have you on your phone, on Facebook, the entire time you were awake if they could. And then they sell that audience to advertisers. So one of the, the, the quotes in there was, if you're not paying for a product, you are the product. So on social media, us as the people are the product. And one of the things that they, they noted in there is that these computers don't know the difference between fake news and real news. What it does know is how, how real your interaction with it is. So if someone keeps pumping you with fake news about Joe Biden and you don't support Joe Biden, and each time there's a fake news article about something he said or one of his policies, they will continue to go out and find more fake news to put in your timeline because it keeps you engaged. And if you feel like, if you ever need proof of this, like if we get looped into a conversation and we don't agree with somebody, we're going back and forth, we're glued to our phones. So confrontation keeps us engaged longer. So the computer that runs these social media platforms constantly is feeding you information to pit you against someone else because arguments last longer on Facebook than someone saying, hey, happy birthday, I hope you have a great day, and you saying thank you. That literally lasts 15 seconds. If someone posts something that you strongly disagree with on Facebook, you may take 45 minutes out of your day to comment back and forth and quote unquote argue with them. So these machines that run social media are, are smarter than any single person in this entire world and it has no morals. It doesn't know the difference between fake news and good news. It doesn't know the difference between conflict and healthy conflict. And it specifically is designed to feed us information that will make us more likely to engage in lengthy interaction with people. And what they've learned is that arguments and confrontation, regardless of where the source of that information comes from, which is some crazy number like 70% of the news that's on social media is fake from both sides. I think when people hear fake news, they think, you know, Donald Trump and he calls out the fake news there and says, man, I wish others were here to, to this and understand nothing but facts. But all you got to do is go and watch Social Dilemma. And then all you have to do is, is know better. Like once I realized that this was happening on, I haven't posted anything political um, supporting a candidate or, or anything in, since I watched it and I won't. And as I step away, it was easy for me, like after one day or two days to realize that I wasn't caught up in these arguments with people on social media. And then when we put our phone down, the problem is, is that we carry that grudge to our next meeting or, 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 or we start to, 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 you know, carry that conversation into the workplace or at home. So you got to stop. What we see on, on social media is all fake. It's not real. We're becoming what they want us to be. So if you feel like it's been out of character for you to argue with somebody on Facebook, if you feel like it's been out of character for you to delete somebody or, or say something to somebody on Facebook that was uh, spiteful or argumentative, or you're right because you're being manipulated through your phone, through social media. And they know that the longer they can keep you arguing with somebody, the, the, the longer you're engaged on Facebook and the more valuable you are 
as a pawn in this game that they can sell to people to advertise. It's so crystal clear to me now. And all of these people that they're interviewing are people that were um, engaged in the early uh, development of Facebook, the early development of Twitter, the early development of Pinterest. And they talked about the one guy was responsible for early on when Facebook was, was just becoming a thing. And they brought him on board. I'm like, hey, we need to figure out how to make money. This is a really cool tool. This is a really... Um, you know, a great way for people to connect, but we got to figure out a way to make money. So they figured out the way to make money was to keep people engaged. And then those audiences is what they would sell to corporations um, to advertise to. So if they have 2 billion people that spend an average of 20 minutes on their, their phone on Facebook each day, it's worth a certain amount of money to, to Coca-Cola. It's worth a certain amount of money to um, a, a Democratic candidate. It's worth a certain amount of money to a Republican candidate. And then what they found is, is they just push content in front of us. And then each time we engage with it, whether it's positive or negative, they'll weigh that and, and use it as a tool to give more of that information to us to keep us engaged longer, regardless if it, if it, if it makes us furious. The computer does not care whether it's pleasure or pain. They just care that we're on our phone. And they'll continue to jam more of that information in your timeline to keep you engaged and mad and arguing. Watch the series. And then here's the deal. Stop judging people based on their Facebook. It's, they're, they're, it's not the real person. Based on what I saw, it's, it's a manipulated avatar that Facebook wants them to be to fit into a category of people that consume a product that they can sell to a company. So what they're making us is 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 they're 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 ma they're making us robots and then saying we can predict this robot's behavior and if we can predict this robot's behavior we know what they're going to buy um, what they're going to sell when they're going to move um, when they're going to refinance when they get hungry and then we'll put all of these ads in front of these people that are likely to consume your product at the exact right time. Don't fall for it. We're being played, man. The guy that you deleted last week on Facebook is probably a super nice dude. He was a pro what you saw was a product of his social media. He was manipulated to act a certain way to fit into a certain group so that that group could be manipulated and marketed to to be capitalized on and sold to the highest bidder. It's not who he really is. The way that you interact on Facebook probably doesn't feel natural to you unless you're super smart and you got this all figured out. One of the guys that the guys talked about is you like, think about kids. Like kids used to watch Saturday morning cartoons or cartoons from, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon to five o'clock in the afternoon. And then they would always control what type of advertising you can have with, with a child. You, know, you couldn't advertise cigarettes or you couldn't advertise, you know, certain products or, or any messages during Saturday morning cartoons. But now on social media platforms and YouTube, they can run at, it's unregulated. Social media is unregulated. They can do whatever they want, whenever they want to whoever they want, anytime. So imagine if, 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 if credit was unregulated if banking was unregulated, how they would manipulate us, how they would take advantage of us. And I'm not saying that people that run social media are just bad people or, or, or whatever, but right now they're not the ones making the decisions. The computers are making the decisions and it's happening in real time and they're feeding things to our timeline to keep us pitted against each other. They, they, to, to have us like, you know, constantly... Um, arguing with the, with each other because it keeps us on our phone longer and they'll manipulate us and then lump us into a category and then that category is worth X amount of dollars because of how they can predict what that person will do next. And the reason they're able to predict what we do next is because they're in control. When they show us a picture, an article, a video, um, or we get tagged in something, they're, they're, they're pushing us in a direction. That's why they can, with almost 100% certainty, predict what we're going to do next. So what can we do? It's hard. But we have to understand that that social media is, 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 is not real. It's fake. The filters are fake. <laughs> the articles are fake. And the people are fake. 
So don't put too much credit into someone that you see on Facebook that appears to be a great person. And don't judge somebody that appears to maybe have a different point of view of you and might not be the best at articulating their feelings or seems insensitive because of the way that they're acting. I'm not saying that there's not people out there that you won't get along with. I'm not even saying that there's people out there you don't agree with. What I'm saying is, is that we are living in a fake world on social media. The people that are on the other side of this are not who we believe they are. They are who social media wants us to believe they are so they can keep us locked into our phones longer and then sell us to the highest bidder. If you haven't seen the Netflix special social media, I would strongly encourage you to watch it and I would strongly encourage you to have your children watch it. We're being played and it's a dangerous high stakes game. The guy at the end who was one of the original uh, developers of Facebook who figured out how to monetize it said, what's next? And they said a civil war. If you've been on Facebook and you watch what's going on on the news channels and all of that stuff, it's not hard to believe that it could result in a civil war where they just take, you know, groups of people and pump them full of, of, of controversy and pump them full of rage against these other people that it would result in some, some level of civil war. It's not the craziest thing to think of. If you look at some of the shit that's going on right now and just how, how like mean we are to each other. Nobody wants to be like that. Who, who honestly believes that a healthy way to live is to, to fight with people and feel belittled and attacked for our opinions? That's definitely not the way we want to live. And it's not normal human behavior. The problem is our brains are the same, really, that they've been for 300 years. These computers are the smartest thing going. This artificial intelligence knows more than we do about what we're going to do next. And it can predict it, and then they feed us with content to control our behavior. And that behavior is not in our best interest. It's not in our friend's best interest. It's not to stimulate the economy. It's not to... to um, bring race relations closer. It's simply to keep us on our phone for a longer period of time so they can track our behavior, predict our behavior, and then sell that information to someone that wants to sell us a goddamn product for a hundred bucks or 30 bucks. But they do that 2 billion times every day for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's why these social media companies make more money than God. Think about that for a second. All of these social media platforms are free because they want you to be on there long enough to be able to predict what you're going to do and then sell you to whatever company will pay for your attention. It's messed up. But here's the gig. The information is out there for us to know about it. So start changing your behavior. What am I doing? I'm taking everything that I see on Facebook with a grain of salt. I'm going to message somebody that appears to have a different opinion of me and ask him to meet him for coffee, ask him to meet him for lunch. Let's have a face-to-face -face phone conversation. I, I inherently believe in people. I don't believe people are naturally inclined to dislike each other. We might get a, a, a short rush from, from, some, you know, from some debate, but ultimately, I'd much rather have friends than I would have enemies, and I think most people are like that. So why are we behaving like we're out there searching for enemies. Anybody that doesn't agree with me, let me know so that I can delete you or argue with you for the next two hours on social media. It's crazy. It's crazy behavior. But it's not so crazy if you understand that we're puppets. They're controlling us. That's, a, that's what they want us to do. So that's why it seems like the person that you've known for 25 years is acting out of pocket or out of character, and it doesn't match up with your opinion of them particularly if your opinion comes from real life experience. So if what you see in real life is different than what you see on social media, stop believing social media. Go with your instincts. Trust your real life experience with people. And if you have a question about someone's intentions, have real life interaction with them. I promise you, the conversations you're having on Facebook with people will be significantly different than what you will have in person. So get off of the phone and start having more conversations with people face to face. 
And then if that's how they are, and that's who they are, then then listen, it's 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 that it's a whole different ball game. But watch the, the Netflix special, Social Dilemma, and stop arguing with people on Facebook. I'm guilty of it. I've been doing it for six months. I'm not doing it anymore. It doesn't make sense. And there's been too many people that have messaged me or have commented and had an observation of me because of, of, of you know, how uh, I looked at the, the response to, to the coronavirus or, you know, who I do or do not support politically or the policies. that And then, you know, these are people that I might have known for 15 or 20 years and we generally had a good relationship and now they felt differently about me because of those things. And how could, you know, two groups of people look at the same information and have such different opinions? Well, it's because we're not being fed the same information. If you took my phone and spent a day on my timeline and we have 700 mutual friends, we both generally like the same television shows, we watch the same sports, we have families, we have kids, you would think that our timeline will look pretty identical. It doesn't. They're feeding you information to get you to engage regardless of what that outcome is to keep you on your phone. They're doing the same thing for me and those things, even a little bit of an adjustment will look completely different. So just realize that social media is fake and all the news and everything, 90% of it that we see is fake. And it's because fake news travels faster than real news. Bad news travels faster than good news. So what do they feed us? Bad news. And a lot of times the only place to find that much bad news is to make it up. So it's real. Fake news is real. And it's being manufactured to keep us glued to our phone so they can sell us to the highest bidder. Don't get caught up in it. Be smarter than that. Care more about your friends. Care more about your family. Care more about your reputation. Care more about your personal relationships to stop believing that social media is real. It's fake. Watch the show. Have a good week.